Hey folks, Ashley here, allthingsindustry.com. In front of you, you see two diagnostic impressions or study models, and this is of Aaron. So we have, um, in this patient, there's a few videos up uh, discussing uh, the extraction. We extracted a, a number of maxillary anterior, mandibular anterior teeth, and we're going down the road right now, and the treatment plan is subtly changing with time uh, to continue uh, going towards an immediate complete maxillary denture and on the mandible we've sort of uh, taken a look to see sort of the uh, the periodontal and pulpal status of these remaining teeth and the mobility and periodontal status of this uh, bicuspid is fairly questionable so I think we're going to go down the road of placing uh, a number of implants and unfortunately I won't be here for uh, that part of the case however I still am here for this, so what we're going to do is we're going to fabricate a maxillary complete denture. This is the, uh, like I said, the diagnostic impression, so in an effort to obtain a, a more accurate impression of the border flange extensions for his complete denture, um, we elected to do a sectional impression technique, which then comes out um, with this as my final cast. So, the follow-on videos will show you sort of what we did, what I did, and was essentially taught to, and how to use a sexual impression technique to get to this stage. Now, the next stage after this is fabrication of a record base to obtain a maxillo-mandibular relationship record, interocclusal record, whatever you want to call it, of Aaron's maxilla. So what we did instead of just using a straight either polyvinyl siloxane impression or an alginate uh, to prevent overextension we're going to do the sexual impression technique so I fabricated a sort of uh, a custom tray onto which I border molded with green compound and then the next stage what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a wash with polyvinyl siloxane uh, light body first place adhesive actually, then the polyvinyl siloxane wash, and then we're going to remove any of the uh, excess polyvinyl siloxane after it's set. Then we're going to pick this up with a an alginate impression. So this is just at the stage we did border molding, uh, started at the posterior aspect, one, one piece here for border molding, another piece here, and we slowly move, in this case front to back, uh, to prevent the amount of uh, compound that gets contacted by the warm water before we um, place it intraorally. Okay, so there are a number of studies indicating that uh, the adhesives significantly increase the retention of polyvinyl siloxanes, actually alginates as well, so we're just going to be taking some. Now this has been disinfected, so I can use the brush from the bottle. If not, uh, just pour some on and use a disposable brush and so what we're going to do is the literature suggests that and as Dr. Dre says you gotta let this dry for at least six to upwards to ten minutes because this if it's not dry this adhesive acts as a separator so nothing's going to stick and it's actually going to be slippery so we're just applying it uh, in a fairly thin coat And additionally, I'll be applying it along the uh, border molding. So again, this is a sectional impression technique. We border mold it with a custom tray, and then we'll pick up with a. We'll do a wash, a reline with a light body vinyl, vinyl polysiloxine or polyvinyl siloxane, and then pick up with an alginate. Okay, now it's definitely starting to get tacky. Cheers. Okay, so here's the uh, 
the wash after with uh, polyvinyl siloxane. And what we're going to do now is we're going to clean up this excess because we're going to now pick this all up with a an alginate impression. And we're just cleaning that out so the alginate will be able to pick up the teeth in the anterior segment. We didn't do the anterior segment in this case because it has significant undercuts so I'd never be able to get this out. We're having difficulty getting under getting this out as it was. And now what we're going to do is we're going to place alginate adhesive on the cameo surface of this custom tray. And then again, like I said, we'll pick that up with an alginate impression. You'll see that just afterwards. Just trying to move all this polyvinyl just to make sure we get something to adhere to. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here we are. Now we've ca we picked up the custom tray and polyvinyl siloxane impression. Of, this is called a sectional impression technique with an alginate uh, impression in a stock tray. So we're just going to trim back approximately two millimeters just on the posterior segment because we don't want the overhang in the post here, but this is going to act as our land area, as Dr. Dre just mentioned to me. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that should suffice. We're going to pour this up in the dual pour technique. So the initial pour will be like this, and then we grind the little curly cues that we put on top, and then pour the base like that. So this is the uh, sectional impression technique. Cheers. Okay, so here we are. I just placed a bowl full of water in the microwave, and we're just going to heat up the uh, border mold in the compound. And so we removed the alginate impression, and now I'm just using the uh, to heat to melt up the impression compound. And we'll remove that just so we don't fracture the cast. And there's our impression. So now we're just going to trim it back, and we're going to fabricate. The next stage stage is to fabricate um, a map. A maxil denture base and wax rims for maxil mandibular relationship record and then we'll section the teeth and fabricate the immediate denture and here we are so this is now my master cast that we used as you just saw the procedure and we did this in an effort to capture the as best as possible the uh, extensions of flanges or the borders of uh, what will be our complete maxillary denture.